In the men's 200 meter semifinals and this year's NCAA Track and Field Championships, we saw many familiar faces once again return to the track, and all of them achieved fantastic times. In the opening heat, we saw Eric Harrison from Ohio State take the victory with a time of 20.18 seconds, finishing very strongly over the final 50 meters. Moving over to the third heat, we saw the fantastic Florida athlete Joseph Fonbelay do what he does best, and that's close like an absolute boss during the later stages of a 200, finishing in first place with a time of 20.10 seconds. These two races were fantastic, but the story of the day was what happened in the second heat, as Javante Harding from North Carolina A&T shocked the entire stadium. After a fair start in the second heat, Harding, who was running out in lane 7, was looking very strong through the opening 100. However, over the final 50 or 60 meters, he started to pull away from everyone else, finishing this 200 in 19.98 seconds, a new personal record and a time that makes him one of only 8 athletes in the world this season to break the 20 second barrier for the half lap distance. This performance was incredible, and it certainly makes Harding one of the big names to look out for in the finals. But unfortunately, this new personal record was soon taken off the official results, as it was soon posted that Javante Harding was disqualified from the men's 200. Now coming around the final bend, you can see Harding unfortunately stepping over the line here on the inside, and even though he was the class of the field in this second event, and the class of all the fields really, he will sadly not be competing in the finals this Friday. This is a big loss, certainly for Javante Harding, but also for the entire track and field world. Throughout this 2022 season, he has been looking excellent, but this performance was truly next level running. The more I think about this, the more it really sinks in that this is a huge bummer. This 19.98 was executed with a very impressive final 50, and even though he did step over the line on the inside, this mistake probably didn't cut off any significant time, if any time at all. So either way you look at it, I think he is clearly in sub-20 shape right now, so I would have loved to have seen him compete in the finals. Now for the athletes that did qualify, we will still have a very exciting race for this Friday. First and foremost, we have Joseph Fonbelay, who made this 20.10 look way too easy. Just take a look at his face coming down to the finish here. It literally looked like he was jogging. Just remarkable. For the final, we also have Harrison from Ohio State, Anwuzuriki from Stanford, Bowling from Georgia, Maswangani from Houston, and Micaiah Harris from Texas. There is a very real possibility that we could see multiple athletes dip under the 20 second barrier this Friday evening. But given the fact that Javante Harding is no longer in this competition, I think we have to call Joseph Fonbelay the pre-race favorite. He's been consistent this season, he's made solid improvements, and again, the man was clearly not running 100% in this race. So keep your eyes out for this 200 meter final, because if he can bring the smoke and run the race that we all know that he is capable of running, I think he can drop a sub 19.9 second time and possibly even break the 19.8 second barrier. Now, one additional point that I wanted to bring up is the current NCAA record in the 200, which was set by Walter Dix back in 2007 at 19.69 seconds. Now, I know that this footage isn't the greatest, but hey, this was 2007. Cameras and phones were just built different back then. But even though this footage is quite low and rather grainy, there is no doubt at how dominant of a win this was from Walter Dix. And at 19.69 seconds, this time has now stood as the NCAA record for 15 entire years. There have only ever been a handful of people that have even the possibility of reaching this time, but I personally think that if Fonbelay can execute a perfect, and I mean perfect 200 meter race, there's a possibility that he could approach this time. But in more realistic terms, I think a 19.69 is slightly beyond his reach at the moment, so I think a 19.85 is more realistic. And now I'll pass the question off to you. Who do you think will win this 200 meter final and what will the winning time ultimately be? Leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching everyone. And as always, until next time.